بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد All praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى and peace be upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I testify that there is no God except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah Brothers and sisters I thank Allah Azza wa Jal, the one that's worthy to be thanked for gathering, his, for gathering us here at this place, at his house, to be his guests. And there's nothing more honorable than being the guest of Allah, to be the slave of Allah, to be from amongst those who attend and gather in the gatherings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, وَمَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا Whoever takes a path of knowledge, Allah who makes an easy path for them to the paradise. The stories of the Quran and Kareem, these beautiful stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates to us in the Quran and Kareem, those beautiful stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us in the Quran and Kareem, for us to learn their stories and understand them and to reflect upon, upon their stories at a time and a moment where sometimes you find those stories even though they're in the past but they're so relevant to our time and so relevant to our day and age. The stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He mentions about previous nations in the past, about righteous and pious people in the past, about those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased from, or even those people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unpleased from. But Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the story of those who Allah is pleased from so we could follow their path. And the stories of those who Allah is unpleased from so we could keep away from that path. And tonight, inshaAllah, we shall talk about and relate to you a story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran Kareem, which is the story of a righteous woman. A woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran Kareem, and Allah Azza wa Jal promises her the paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam centuries and years after her in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks highly of her and how he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praises her and commends her in the hadith it is this pious and righteous woman the wife of Fir'aun her name is Asya bintu Muzahim Asya Bint Muzahim. Asya was the wife of Fir'aun. And let me take you back to the time of the birth of Musa alayhi salam, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran al-Kareem, Natlu alayka min nabai Musa wa Fir'aun bil haqqi li qawmin yu'minun. We recite to you, O Muhammad, the story and the news of Musa and Fir'aun for those who want to grasp the truth and for those who want to be from the true believers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Fir'auna ala fil ard wa ja'ala ahlaha shi'an yastad'ifu ta'ifatan minhum yudabbihu abna'ahum wa yastahi nisa'ahum innahu kana min al-mufsideen. Fir'aun had transgressed. Fir'aun had transgressed on earth and he started to claim lordship. He started to call people to his worship. He started to invite people to his worship that he is the Lord of the universe and he is the creator of mankind. And he is the one that has the ultimate and the most powerful strength. He has everything in his hands. He does whatever he wills and whatever he wants. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to mention what he did to Bani Israel. How he continued to slaughter their children. After the dream that Fir'aun had saw, after the dream that Fir'aun had seen in his, uh, in his dream and his vision, he saw that his kingdom was destroyed by someone from Bani Israel. So he decided to start slaughtering the children of Bani Israel. Yudabbiha abna'ahum, he will continue to kill their male children. Wayastahi nisa'ahum, and he let go of their female children. So that was his strategy, that was his policy in killing the children of Bani Israel. So he could cut off the descent of Bani Israel and he would no longer be threatened by anyone from Bani Israel. And the mother, of, the mother of Musa, the mother of Musa, she gave birth 
that ye in which Fir'aun had decided to slaughter the male children and the male babies of Bani Israel, she gave birth to Musa alayhi salam. But she was so afraid that she did not disclose or expose her pregnancy to anyone until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her with Musa alayhi salam. But she was so fearful and concerned over Musa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired her in the Quran al-Kareem. And Allah says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِيدٍ We inspired the mother of Musa, the mother of Musa to, uh, the mother of Musa to suckle and to breastfeed Musa alayhi salam. فَإِذَا خِفْتَ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْنِ وَلَا تَخَافِ وَلَا تَحْزَنِي So suckle him and breastfeed him. And if you are so concerned and fearful over Musa alayhi salam, then cast him in the river. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَا تَخَافِ وَلَا تَحْزَنِي Don't be afraid and don't be sad. And how could a mother that just delivered and gave birth to her son after she is inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put him in a chest, to put him in a basket, and put him and cast him in the river. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to a mother to do this. In return, Allah is saying to her, don't be afraid and don't be sad. Like when you really think about it, which mother would not be concerned, would not be afraid, would not be sad over her child, her newborn child, after she puts him in a basket or she puts him in a chest and then she casts him in a river. Of course she's going to be concerned. Of course she's going to be sad. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to comfort her. And Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to show her that His promise will always prevail and what Allah Azza wa Jal says will always transpire. وَلَا تَخَافِ وَلَا تَحْزَنِ So after you suckle him and put him in the chest and then put him in the river, don't be afraid, don't be sad. إِنَّا رَدُّهُ إِلَيْكَ We shall return him back to you. We'll bring him back to you. وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Not only that we'll bring him back to you, but we're going to make him from amongst our messengers. We'll make him from amongst our prophets and messengers. So this is the promise that Allah Azza wa Jal gave the mother of Musa alayhi salam. A promise after a sacrifice. So first Allah Azza wa Jal wants to see her sacrifice. And the sacrifice is that she suckles him. And after that she puts him in a chest. And then she puts him in a river and let him go. Allah will bring him back to her. Is she going to submit to that? Is she going to adhere to that? Well, that's exactly what she did. She did exactly what Allah Azza wa Jal told her to do. She put him in a chest. Then she put him in a river. And then she let go of him. And the one that she was concerned over, her son to fall in his hands, is the same person that Allah Azza wa Jal made the river take that chest to. And that was Fir'aun. She was afraid. That his son will fall in the hands of Fir'aun. So Allah Azza wa tells her, put him in the river. And then the same person that she's afraid that his son will fall in is the same person that Allah Azza wa Jal made his son go to and reach to. And it was Fir'aun. فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُمٌ وَحَزَنًا So the one that managed to pick him up is the family of Fir'aun. And it was Asya. It was this woman that we are talking about now. Asya bint Musahib. She is the one that picked him up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this chest that Musa alayhi salam, who is a baby in that chest, that his mother threw him in the river, made that chest reach all the way to the shores of the palace of Fir'aun. And it was Asya bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun, that picked him up. And she is the one that embraced him and took him into her house. And who objected to that? It was Fir'aun. Fir'aun wanted to kill him. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted wanted the one that will destroy Fir'aun grow in the kingdom of Fir'aun, grow in the actual household of Fir'aun, to grow in the palace of Fir'aun. Before that Allah says, The wife of Fir'aun, and this is the wife that we are talking about, the woman that we are talking about. She said to Fir'aun, let him comfort our eyes, because Asya, she was barren. She was a woman that would not deliver birth. She would not give birth to any children. And when she saw this child arriving to his shore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala casted in her heart the love of Musa. So she became so attached to Musa and so loving towards Musa, even though Fir'aun wanted to kill him. But she said, This could be our child. Maybe we could get something good out of this child. Don't kill him. Maybe we'll benefit out of him. Or we might even take him as a child. 
adopt him as a child, and the rest of the people would not even know. So now Musa alayhi salam grows in the household of his own enemy. He grows in the household of the one that he's going to destroy. And Fir'aun welcomes this child that will destroy him later on. And this is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah azza wa jalla will turn things. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things prevail. That the one that will destroy Fir'aun will be brought up by Fir'aun himself. It's not always the way you see things and the way Allah azza wa jalla wants them to be. You could see things from the outside, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans otherwise. You could see things from the out surface, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares something from the inside. It's not always what you perceive. It's always what Allah wants to plan. So now, Fir'aun, the one that will be destroyed on the hands of Musa, is the one that will be bringing up and the one that will be raising Musa alayhi salam. And then the story continues. And let me fast forward you now to the end of the story where we want to come to. And this is the woman that we are talking about. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to Musa alayhi salam and inspires Musa, Musa now becomes a prophet and a messenger. And after he was wanted by Fir'aun and his army for killing one of the Coptic Egyptians in Egypt, now he comes back to Egypt calling and inviting Fir'aun to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Fir'aun to denounce what he believes to be as a, go, uh, as a Lord or as God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Musa on a mission. The mission is to try and call and invite Fir'aun to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Fir'aun to denounce that he is the Lord of the universe and at the same time to invite Bani Israel to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to honor Bani Israel after they've been dishonored for many years. Now Musa alayhi salam confronts Fir'aun and he brings to him the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens Musa with. He brings so many different miracles such as the hand glittering and such as the stick turning into a snake and eating all the rest of the snakes and the ropes of the magicians and the fortune tellers that Fir'aun used to depend on and so on and so on and many different miracles that Fir'aun and his people experienced and witnessed with their own eyes. And then Musa alayhi salam is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to travel and leave Egypt towards the promised land and that's Palestine. Now during this time, during this moment, Asia bint Muzahim, who is the wife of Fir'aun, embraces Islam and she becomes a follower of Musa alayhi salam because she is the one that looked after Musa. She saw the signs and the signals of Musa alayhi salam being a true prophet and a messenger and she realized that her husband is just bluffing. He is not God, he is not Lord and he's got nothing to do with God, he's nothing to do with Lordship, he's got nothing to do with being the creator, he's just a creation of the creator Allah Azza wa Jal. So she surrenders to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she submits to Allah Azza wa Jal and keeping in mind Fir'aun is to command his people to worship him. Ya qawmi alaysa li mulku mis وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ He used to say to his people, can't you see that I'm the owner and the possessor of Egypt? And can't you see these rivers flowing from beneath me? Can't you see, can't you witness? I am your Lord. I'm your Rabb. I'm the one that you should be surrendering to. I'm the one that you should be submitting to. I'm the one that you should be worshipping. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, فَاسْتَخَفَّ قَوْمَا فَأَطَاعُوا Allah Azza wa says, هَهِ بِلِرُدْ and how he bluffed on his own people, how he made them and treated them with stupidity. But unfortunately, his own people listened to him. He fooled them and they fell into it. He fooled them and they followed him. Allah says, they were disobedient people. That's, that's the character of these people. That's their way of thinking. He fooled them and they listened to him. He told them that I am the Lord of the universe and they surrendered to him. I'm your creator and they've asked him. I am your Rabb, I'm your Lord, and they worshipped him. That was the character of Fir'aun, La'anahullah. But it was his wife that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to bless with Islam. And it was Asya bint Muzahim that she became a Muslim and she abandoned she abandoned the worship of Fir'aun because she knew he's only a human being. He is her husband. As much as he tries to make himself exalted and as much as he tries to say about himself, he is the Lord of the universe, she knew he's got nothing to do with the Lordship and he's got nothing to do with being the creator or the master of mankind. He's just a typical human being, an arrogant, ignorant human being. 
So she abandoned his worship. She turned against him. She worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that was the biggest embarrassment for Fir'aun. That his own wife turns against him. His own wife does not even worship him. His own family. And for that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to make her as a lesson in front of Fir'aun, in front of the rest of the believers to the day of judgment. That Allah Azza wa Jal honored her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of her in the Quran al-Kareem. وَدَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And Allah Azza wa Jal gives an example to those who believe. What's this example? What's this good believing woman that Allah Azza wa Jal wants the believers to listen to and wants the believers to take as an example? Imra'at Fir'aun, the wife of Fir'aun, who is Asya bin Muzahim, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, later on he says, not many women became complete and only four women became complete. And those four women that became complete are Khadija bint Khuwailid, Fatima bint Muhammad, Maryam bint Imran and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adds to that Asya bint Muzahim. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised her. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said she's a complete woman. She's a good woman. She's a righteous woman. She's a pious woman. For that reason Allah azza wa jal makes mention of her in the Quran al-Kareem. إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ بْنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ Oh Allah build, oh Allah build for me a house near you in the paradise. وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ And protect me and save me from Fir'aun and his dirty actions. وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And protect me from the oppressive people. Protect me from the oppressive people. The story is that Fir'aun continued to torture her. He continued to torment her. He continued to persecute her. And he commanded his soldiers to crucify her. And for them to nail the nails in her hands. And for them to leave her under the sun in the middle of the desert. And every time Fir'aun will command his soldiers to go and question her and ask her, Who is your Lord? And she'll say, My Lord is the Lord of Musa, la ilaha illahu. There is no God except him. So they continue to torture her and torture her and torture her. And then Fir'aun will say to his soldiers, Go and ask her. If she believes in me, then let go of her. And if she doesn't believe in me, then continue to torture her. So they'll go back to her and ask her, Who do you believe in? She'll say, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord of Musa and the Lord of Fir'aun. So they'll continue to torture her and torture her and torture her. That the narration says that during the day when she's under the hot blazing sun, the angels will come and shade her with their own wings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to protect her. Allah azza wa jal wanted to honor her. And the greatest honor is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her see her palace in the paradise while she's on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and vowed for her to see her palace in the paradise while she is being crucified. And that's the moment that Fir'aun told his soldiers that last and final time, go and ask her, who does she worship? If she worships me, then let go of her. And if she worships anyone beside me, then kill her. So that's the moment that they came to her, bringing a massive rock to crack her on her head. And that's when she said, Rabbi ibn li indaka baytan fil jannah. Oh Allah, build and establish for me a house that's near you in the paradise. Not any house, but I want that house to be near you, Allah. I want that house to be close to you. I want to be your neighbor, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And that's why the scholars say, she chose the neighbor before the house. She chose the neighbor before the house. And the neighbor that she chose is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi ibn li indaka baytan fil jannah. Oh Allah, establish for me a house in your paradise. But it must be near you, Allah. It must be close to you. Wa najini min fir'aun wa amali. And protect me and save me from fir'aun and his dirty actions. Wa najini min al-qawm al-zalimeen. And protect me from the oppressive people. Protect me from the people of fir'aun. So Allah Azza wa Jal made his sea, her house and palace in the paradise while she's on earth. And that's when the soldiers of fir'aun killed her. And it was her destiny and final decree is that she ends up in the paradise. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that not many women were complete and only four women were complete. And amongst those four women is Asya bint Muzahim rahimahallah wa radiyallahu ta'ala anha. In another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says the best of women, the best of women in the paradise are 
خديجه رضي الله تعالى عنها فاطمه مريم ان اسيا سيدنا النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم guaranteed the paradise for Asia bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun guaranteed the completion of Iman and piety in this world and guaranteed the paradise in the hereafter and there are a lot of other narrations that say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor Asia bint Muzahim to be the wife of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the paradise. She sacrificed a king and she sacrificed wealth and she sacrificed palaces and she sacrificed prestige and she sacrificed sacrificed wealth and she sacrificed kingdom in this world but Allah gave her the greatest kingdom in the hereafter and Allah will give her the greatest husband and that's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the paradise that's Asia bint Muzahim she is that woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke in the Quran Kareem and not only that but Allah made her as an example to all the believers to the day of judgment where Allah says وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and Allah Azza wa Jalla gives an example to the believers and that example is the wife of Fir'aun Asya bint Muzahim Asya bint Muzahim a great woman, a great example to the believers, to the men before the women, to the day of judgment in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her and made her story a Quran, a verse to be recited to the day of judgment as an example to the believers because of her piety, because of her righteousness and before all that because of her steadfastness and perseverance, determination. Nothing deterred her away from the belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing turned her away from the belief of Allah azza wa jal. She was firm, she was steadfast, she was perseverant, she was strong, she was determined, she wanted the pleasure of Allah, even though she was willing to give up all her pleasures in this world. She gave up all her pleasures in this world for the sake of the pleasure of Allah. She gave up everything that she had in this world, including her life, including his soul, including her wealth and palace and kingdom and everything that she had for the sake of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah gives you. That's what Allah azza wa jalla gives you when you give back to him. Allah gives you pleasure in this world and paradise in the hereafter. And this is the example for every person that sacrifices for the sake of Allah and struggles for the sake of Allah and endures for the sake of Allah and gives for the sake of Allah and takes for the sake of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jalla will give you more in this world and a lot more later on in the hereafter. That's the example that Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks about in the Quran Kareem. وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مْرَأَةَ فِرْعَانَ and Allah Azza wa gives an example, a, an example to the believers. The wife of Fir'aun, it called Rabbibni li indaka baytan fil jannah. When she said, Oh Allah, establish for me a house in the paradise that's near you and close to you. Wanajini min Fir'aun wa amale. And save me from Fir'aun and his actions. Wanajini min al qawm al zalimin. And save me from the oppressive people. This is Asya bint Muzahim. Another quick story that I'll relate to you tonight is a story that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa mentions in this hadith. And this story is a story that's been narrated by Al-Bukhari that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam himself shares with us on his journey in the night journey in Al-Isra when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam was coming back from Jerusalem to Mecca. He was traveling with Jibreel alayhi salam on the mount that each step that he'll take is as far as he could see. While he was in the middle of the night coming back on his way back and return from Jerusalem to Mecca in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam will smell a beautiful fragrant smell. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam will smell a beautiful fragrant smell. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam will ask Jibreel, oh Jibreel, what's this beautiful fragrant smell? So Jibreel alayhi salam will say, this smell is the beautiful smell of the hair coma of Fir'aun and her children. A woman that used to comb the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun and her children. She used to comb the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun and that's the smell, the beautiful fragrant smell of her and her four children. What's so significant about this woman, about this righteous woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam experience 
not only that he experienced his story, but Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will smell a beautiful fragrant smell that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to smell it on his return from Jerusalem to Mecca. And then he'll ask Jibreel, what's this beautiful fragrant smell? Well, it is the hair coma of the daughter of Fir'aun and her children. What's their story? This righteous woman, she used to be from the followers of Musa. And she used to work in the palace of Fir'aun. And her duty, her task, her job was to comb the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun. And while one day she's combing the hair of the daughter of Fir'aun, the comb fell out of her hand. She went down to pick it up and she said, Bismillah. So the daughter of Fir'aun said, Bismillah in the name of Allah, my father. So this righteous mother, this righteous woman should say, no, it's not your father. It is the Lord of your father, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your Lord, my Lord, and the Lord of your father. So the daughter of Fir'aun was shocked to hear that there's another Lord beside her father because her father Fir'aun had enforced and imposed upon everyone, including his family, that he is the Lord of the universe. He is the creator and the master of mankind. So now this righteous woman who is a follower of Musa at that time, she believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she says, Bismillah in the name of Allah. Who is it my father, the daughter says, the daughter of Fir'aun. So this mother or this mother, this righteous believing woman, she responds and she says, no, no, it is the Lord of your father and my Lord. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true creator and master of universe. So she said, I'm going to inform my father. So this righteous woman, she say, let you go and inform your father. Tell your father about it. So she goes and informs her father that there is someone in her own household, someone in his own palace, someone in his community, someone in his nation that believes in another Lord beside Allah, beside Fir'aun. That this woman believes in a Lord beside Fir'aun. So Fir'aun brings her forward and he says to her, do you believe in another Lord beside me? So she says, yes, Allah, my Lord and your Lord. So Fir'aun says to her, is there another Lord beside me? So she said, yes, Allah, my creator and your creator. So Fir'aun starts to threaten her and he starts to put pressure on her for her to return and turn back from the worship of Allah to worship him. And she is steadfast. Like Asya. Like Asya bin Muzahim. Nothing turned her away from Allah Azza wa Jal. Same thing this righteous woman. Same thing this righteous woman that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu tells us about his story. She says, Allah is my Lord and he is your Lord. So Fir'aun starts to threaten her and Fir'aun starts to put feet in her heart and he starts to tell her, I'll do this to you and I'll do that to you. And she is so steadfast and insistent that there is no Lord except Allah Azza wa Jal. She is perseverant that there is no Lord worthy to be worshipped except Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So he found out that she had four children, four young children. And the fourth one amongst them is a, just a newly born child. And then he brings those four children and in front of her, while she's witnessing that with, with her own eyes, he commands his soldiers to bring a huge pot with boiling oil in it. And then he tells her, who do you worship? She says, I worship Allah. So he grabs the first child and he casts the first child in the boiling oil, in the hot pot burning and melting in the presence and in front of his mother. His own mother is watching. His own mother is witnessing. Her child is melting and burning. And then he brings the second child and he says to her, who do you worship? She says, I worship Allah. So she, he grabs the second child and he throws him in the boiling oil, in the hot pot, burning and melting in front of his own mother. Then he grabs the third child and he asks her, who do you worship? She says, I worship Allah. So he grabs the third child and he throws him in that boiling oil, in the hot pot, burning and melting in front of his own mother. And now she is left with her final child, just a newly born child. So she becomes hesitant. She gets scared over this baby. So he tells her, who do you worship? And then now she's hesitant. So Allah Azza wa Jal makes this baby speak. And he says, oh mother, do not be concerned and do not be afraid. By Allah, my brothers are all in the paradise and me and you are in the paradise. So he grabs that baby and throws him in that boiling hot water or oil in that hot 
pot and then he throws her in the boiling oil and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her to be an honorable woman to the day of judgment in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smells her beautiful fragrance smell on his return from Jerusalem to Mecca and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her a remembrance to the day of judgment that we speak about her and we relate her story to this day and to the day of judgment this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor those who want to honor themselves by obeying Allah and following the commands of Allah and by being steadfast in pleasing Allah azza wa jal. Nothing will shake them. Nothing will turn them away from Allah. Nothing will make them hesitant to please Allah azza wa jal. Nothing will put any fear in their heart beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other than Allah azza wa jal. This is what you get when you are steadfast. This is what you get when you are perseverant. This is what you get when you are determined. Allah honors you in this world and Allah will get you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the greatest honor in the hereafter. Allah azza wa jal will honor you in this world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a lot more than what you expect in the hereafter. Allah will honor you in this world and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you the greatest honor in the hereafter. This is the story of this great woman, a woman from the followers of Musa alayhi salam, the comb or the hair comber of the daughter of Fir'aun, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her a remembrance to the day of judgment and Allah honored her and before her Allah azza wa jal honored Asiya bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun, this great woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in the Quran al-Kareem and the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam speaks highly of and he guarantees her the paradise and Allah will honor her not only the paradise but with the marriage of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the paradise Allah will give the same honor to those who are steadfast and strong like these women like this righteous people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions in the hadith. My brother and my sister, no matter what you experience, no matter what you face, no matter what you see, know that with your steadfastness to please Allah, Allah azza wa jal will honor you in return. Allah will give you more in return in this world and the hereafter. Allahumma taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim. وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا في الاسنين سبحانك اللهم بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك تقدم تقدم